Hello. The most popular variant of chess is loser's chess. The reason is that the rules are simpler than in normal chess, but still you need to calculate and foresee what is about to happen. It's also normally very exciting to the very end who will win and who will lose. Another thing I know that children love is this what, that you try to get rid of all your pieces and they love this feeling because it contradicts to the normal way of playing chess. So let's take a look at uh, this loses chess. What you do is that you put out the pieces in the starting position of a normal game. But now the goal is to get rid of all your pieces. You have to capture if you can. If you have many choices to capture, the choice is yours. If uh, someone cannot make a move, then the game is finished and you calculate who has got fewer pieces this one will win. So, let's take a look at a game of loser's chess. Maybe white starts with e4. Now, d5. White has to take the pawn on d5. The queen has to take the pawn on d5. And now white plays queen to h5 with the idea that maybe black can take the queen with queen d5 take h5. But black has got several possibilities to capture and chooses to take, instead chooses to take on d2 like this. Now, white to move, and white has got several possibilities. Of course, white can capture the queen on d2, but instead takes on h7. The rook takes on h7, and now white has to take the, uh, the queen on d2. Black has to take the pawn on h2, the rook has to take on h2, and now black chooses to play um, bishop to h3, white has to take it, and now black plays knight to h6. White has to capture the knight, the pawn takes the rook, the bishop takes the pawn, and the bishop takes the pawn. And now it is white to move, and actually in this position it's a forced win for white. And this is very instructive and a little bit like a puzzle, because take a look what white will do. First f4, the bishop has to take. Then g3, the bishop has to take. Now you can see that uh, the bishop will take uh, on e1 in the next move, so white can prepare a bit by playing knight to e2. The bishop takes the king on e1, and now knight to d2, the bishop has to take the knight. b4, the bishop has to take the, uh, the, the pawn, knight to three, c3, the bishop has to take the knight, and in the next move, the bishop has to take on a1, so white can prepare a bit. Playing a4, the bishop takes on a1, c3, bishop has to take on c3, a5, the bishop has to take on i5, and finally, bishop to a6, and white gets rid of the last piece after knight to take on a6. So, you have to watch out about this when you play loses chess. It is when the opponent has got a sequence of moves where you can take a piece in every move. Time to make a conclusion about this game. Loses chess, you start from the initial position of a game. The goal is to get rid of all your pieces. You must capture if you can. If you have more than one capture, you choose. If someone cannot make a move, the one with fewer pieces win. One great thing with the loses chess is that it's suitable for puzzles. The reason is that the solutions normally are very clear and easy to follow, also for beginners. And I will show you one example now. In this position, it is white to move and white should win. Can you find the winning sequence of moves? In just some seconds, I will give you the answer. So if you need more time, please pause the video. In this position, it's white to move and white starts with queen to b8. The rook has to take uh, the queen and then bishop b5. The rook has to take the bishop. And now, 
In the next move, the rook has to take on h5, so white can prepare with playing king to g2. And after rook takes on h5, the king is ready to be captured by playing king to h2, and uh, black has to take the king, and white wins. So, just let your children play this um, chess variant, and not the least, construct some losers games puzzles because the children will love them. Bye!